On the 18th of October, 1999, the third episode of Walking With Dinosaurs, Cruel Sea, was released. Whilst I adore all six episodes of Walking With Dinosaurs, if I had to pick my favourite, I would have to go with Cruel Sea. The visuals, music, tone and storytelling are simply incredible. I have a big appreciation for the focus on marine reptiles this episode has, as dinosaurs were far from the only fantastic creatures alive in the Mesozoic. Right off the bat, we are greeted with what is, in my opinion, the best scene in the entire series, the famous Eustreptospondylus fake out. Do I even need to describe why this scene is awesome? The narration seemingly bigs up this dinosaur for it to just get ambushed and devoured by the enormous Lyplorodon before disappearing into the blue as the title appears. Mwah. Perfection. This episode takes place in Oxfordshire, England, 149 million years BC, during the late Jurassic, which unfortunately creates an immediate accuracy problem. Most of the creatures in this episode were already extinct by this time, but if they were to go with a more appropriate time period of around 165 to 160 million BCE, chronologically, it would take place before Time of the Titans, and from a narrative standpoint, it makes more sense for that episode to come before this one, so I can understand why. Whilst there are similar, geologically younger animal equivalents they could have used, this episode is still fantastic regardless. The opening narration and aerial establishing shots set the mood. This episode is not as cheerful as the previous time of the Titans, which showed the giant dinosaurs in all their glory. Here, it is made apparent that dinosaurs do not rule, as rising sea levels have created vast inland seas teeming with fierce marine reptiles, the first of which we are introduced to is the plesiosaur Cryptoclidus. I really like the model and the simple spotted pattern they have, but they are inaccurately portrayed like seals resting on the shore. Still, I love the transition of them going from uncanny landlubbers to graceful swimmers. This is followed by a shot of ammonites, staples of the Mesozoic seas and fossil collections worldwide, as well as modern live-acted jellyfish and sardines, which I always appreciate, as I think it helps make these worlds of the past more believable and less alien to the viewer. We are then introduced to, arguably, the main creature of the episode, the ichthyosaur ophthalmosaurus, which have migrated to the shallow seas to give birth. Unlike many creatures in the series, the ophthalmosaurus is actually still really accurate, there's also something cute about the model, and I just really like the colour choice as well. The narration highlights the distinct differences in swimming styles between the two animals, with Ophthalmosaurus having a more traditional fish-like method of swimming, whereas Cryptoclidus used their four flippers in a unique way similar to sea turtles or penguins. Speaking of penguins, fun fact, the sardine scene is actually footage of penguins hunting but they edited the Cryptoclidus model on top. I also have to praise the music. Benjamin Bartlett really did create a masterpiece with Cruel Sea, utilising many samples from the album Distorted Reality by Spectrosonics and mixing them with the more traditional instruments to create an eerie yet peaceful, tense yet sombre piece that is simply magnificent to the ears. Back on land, we're introduced to what could be considered this episode's pterosaur, Rampharynchus, which is also the only creature that would be alive at this time, if I recall correctly. The model looks really ugly, but not in a bad way. In terms of accuracy, the head isn't quite the right shape, the wingtip shouldn't be as pointed, and it could probably do with more pycnofibers, but overall, it's fairly good. What's interesting to me is its behaviour. Here it is portrayed as a skim feeder, whereas more recent studies suggest it would more likely dive after prey similar to modern gannets. Regardless, I think the underwater shots of them skimming the surface are really impressive. I also like how of the three pterosaurs we've seen so far, each has portrayed a very different lifestyle. The Patinosaurus was a general insectivore, the Enurignathus was an insectivore living in symbiosis with the Diplodocus, and the Rampharynchus are coastal piscivores, a very nice touch. 
Returning to the water, we see the Ophthalmosaurus giving birth to live young, tail first, and using an umbilical cord. This is based on real fossil evidence, which I think is an excellent addition. That animatronic looks fantastic as well. With one mother having trouble during the birthing process, her struggles attract the horned shark Hybodus, a model so convincing that people thought it was a real shark. Nice one, Framestore. But of course, this leads to the real star of the show. It is impossible to talk about Cruel Sea without addressing the elephant in the room, the Lyplerodon. Yes, it is enormous. By far the most exaggerated creature in the series in terms of size. This was based on scant fossil evidence of giant pliosaurs, but these most likely were not Lyplerodon, which was closer in size to a killer whale rather than a blue whale. Still, it is awesome and the model has aged pretty well, except for the interlocking teeth and the lack of tail fluke, which also applies to Cryptoclitus. This giant mottled black and white Lyplerodon became so iconic it is basically synonymous with the animal now whenever someone talks about it. I still adore it even if it is wrong. The underwater caves are a treat for the eyes and are a refuge for baby Ophthalmosaurus. Here they learn how to hunt and survive in the dangerous seas, who are then properly introduced to use Streptospondylus, the only dinosaur in this episode. The model is pretty bland, as is the coloration, just sort of looking like a generic theropod, and not the most accurate either, with a head that is too stubby and bulky. However, this blandness may work in its favour, as it perpetuates the notion that dinosaurs here do not rule, as all we've seen of them so far are them looking bland, being eaten by a Lyplurodon, and swimming between the islands and fighting over rotten meat. I like how we also see a Ramphorhynchus attempt to dig into a tree trunk to extract bark beetles, even though it isn't its primary food source, and it adds depth to the animal. Even though they are not the top predator, the Hybodus are very prevalent as a threat, which is first showcased when they are hunting baby Ophthalmosaurus. The Cryptoclidus searching for stones for ballast might not be accurate, but I still appreciate the inclusion of this potential interesting part of their lifestyle. It should also be said how much of a presence the Lyplurodon has in this episode. Even when it isn't on screen, the narration declares how much other creatures like Cryptoclidus fear the huge sea monster. Seeing the Ophthalmosaurus hunt in the dark waters of the night is so fascinating and otherworldly, yet so believable. We then get more live acted creatures in the horseshoe crab. These are still around today, and I really like the inclusion, as it helps ground the episode in reality more. In the next scene, the Ramphorhynchus feast on the horseshoe crab eggs, and we finally see the Eustreptospondylus actively prey upon them. Note how, as the episode's runtime continues, they slowly become more and more successful. More on that later. The next scene shows the baby Ophthalmosaurus aging and becoming expert hunters of fish like the adults. Again, the Lyplurodon is given an impressive present. Quote, Lyplurodon is a shark eater. Such a succinct and chilling line considering how we view sharks today. This presence is challenged, however, with the arrival of another Lyplurodon. The bull bites the approaching female, wounding her flipper, showing vulnerability in what so far has been an unstoppable predator. In the final scene, after a huge tropical storm, we see the iconic image of the bull Lyplurodon we've seen terrorise the entire episode, stranded on a beach, surrounded by dead Ramphorhynchus. Helpless, the Goliath dies and is scavenged by the Eustreptospondylus he ate at the beginning, bringing the story full circle. Lastly, we see the surviving Ophthalmosaurus leave the shallow seas for the females to return with their own offspring. Despite the inaccuracies and paleo meme this episode spread with the gargantuan Lyplurodon, Cruel Sea is just beautiful in my eyes. The visuals, the pacing, the music, everything just works masterfully, and all this combined makes it mine and many other people's favourite episode. Thank you so much for watching, click the link to see my review of a figure based on an animal that appeared in this episode, and I'm very sorry for the long wait for this video. Life has been difficult, 
but I'm hoping that uploads will be more frequent and that we'll be reviewing Giant of the Skies in the near future. Thank you. Bye-bye now.